What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Honda Odyssey, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, wanted to check this one out today because in a world where SUVs are absolutely taking over, the Honda Odyssey is still absolutely killing it and there are actually some minor changes for the 2022 odyssey as well and not only that one of the main reasons i wanted to check this one out today is honda for the first time i feel like in forever is offering zero percent financing on quite a few of their models so definitely want to check that out go to honda's website and check out offers so you can see if there's zero percent financing on whatever honda you're particularly interested in but also the odyssey is known for great reliability has a very good track record for that and so in this video I will be testing out everything about the Odyssey from third row legroom to acceleration, braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, even exhaust clips. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Odyssey. First one being the LX starting at $32,090. EX for $35,490, the EXL, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $38,760, Touring for $42,800, and lastly, the Elite, starting at $47,820. And so, regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Odyssey is going to be the same. Powering this one is going to be a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 260 62 pound feet of torque available at 4700 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here but zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 6.6 .6 seconds which i gotta admit is quite impressive for a minivan if you were comparing the odyssey to the sienna sienna comes in at approximately 6.9 so the odyssey's got the sienna beat there when it comes to zero to 60 at least mpg numbers come in at 19 in the city 28 on the highway taking right regular unleaded fuel. But so that before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter tests or acceleration tests here in our Odyssey, I did want to mention there are actually some drive modes on this one. They will include normal, snow, eco, and sport. Those drive mode buttons are all located just underneath the infotainment display there, and they will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, climate control settings, and of course, traction control settings as well. For example, if you were to put in that snow mode, that is going to adjust that traction control to give you the best optimal grip in the snow but nonetheless since we now have that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway first wanted to put the paddle shifters here to the test and let's just see how quickly they're going to react for us here all right we are in first hang on now yep 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 now we're in first gear here we go eh. There's a little bit of a delay. It's to be expected. It's a minivan after all. But anyways, I do like that the paddle shifters are there. Typically what I recommend people do, if you want to, it doesn't matter. But when you're going down a hill, let's say when it's snowing out, you can always use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking as opposed to actually hitting the brakes when you're going down a hill and then sliding off the road because the roads are slippery. So they are good for engine braking, I will say that. But I'm gonna go ahead and give back full control to the Odyssey here. I'm just gonna press that D button again that gets back full control and Having said that, let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test with the Odyssey having full control, and let's see how quickly we can get this 2022 Honda Odyssey here up to speed. All right, so we got a little bit of an uphill climb here, but three, two, one. <laughs> Guys, darn it. It's not bad. It'll get the job done. It's definitely not the quickest thing in the world, but I'm excited that it is quicker than the Sienna. And there was a little bit of slippage as well at the beginning there because the roads are quite wet. It's kind of been raining all night. So this morning, the roads are not going to be the best for grip. But having said that, you're not going to have any issues of merging onto the highway. So all is good there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.6-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13-inch solid rear discs. As far as that seat, 
60 to zero stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at a respectable 124 feet. So again, for comparison, Sienna comes in at 128. So they're pretty, pretty close when it comes to the stopping power. But having said that, I do love the brakes on the Odyssey. They're actually a lot better than most SUVs that I test. Like let's say the Volkswagen Atlas comes in at 139 feet from 60. So definitely a very nice bite. There's no dead spots in the brake pedal or anything like that. So I do like the braking on the Odyssey. And touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's pretty much as expected. It's actually, I would say a little bit above average compared to a lot of the SUVs that I test. So ride quality is pretty much as expected. It's perfectly fine for me. As far as steering feel goes, I actually really like it. I kind of expected the Honda Odyssey to have this super loosey goosey steering feel with no response whatsoever to it. But I should have expected differently because typically Honda really kills it when it comes to steering feel. And this is no exception. I actually do like the steering feel. I mean, it's not gonna be as heavy as maybe a Civic Type R or something like that, but steering feel actually is quite nice in the Odyssey. I will say that. But touching on cabin noise, it's perfectly fine. Definitely absorbing a lot of the wind noise. So not a whole lot coming into the cabin. You guys could probably tell that. And I will say that may be due in part because we do have the EXL trim because you do get acoustic laminated front windshield if you were to go with the EXL trim level and up and then acoustic front and rear doors if you were to go with the Elite. But then touching on visibility, that is one of the first things I noticed. Visibility is amazing, absolutely amazing. I love it. I can see perfectly fine out the back definitely better than the SUV counterparts that I tend to drive. So absolutely no issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility. Also wanted to mention though, rain sensing windshield wipers coming on the elite trim level. So that's pretty cool. Whenever it detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you if you go with the elite trim level at least. So just one last thing you gotta worry about there. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Honda Odyssey. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Honda Odyssey. Actually looks pretty darn good, completely blacked out, in my opinion. And so one of the minor updates for the 2022 model year is going to be a new color called Radiant Red Metallic 2. Did want to mention that so let's go ahead and start up front on this one though led headlights actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board of course they do come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also coming standard there are led fog lights if you go with the ex trim level and up meaning the lx is the only trim that will not get them active grille shutters also come standard on every single trim level across the board meaning those shutters will open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time it's one of those features i think i first saw in bmw that is now making its way to other manufacturers as well so it's a pretty cool one too but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the 2022 odyssey here all right so now since we are around to the side rear privacy glass does come standard across the board you will find a floating roof line towards the back of this one although it's not as evident when everything is completely blacked out i will say that but it is there black door handles come with the lx trim level you will find chrome door handles if you were to go with the ex trim level and up when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trims ex trim level and up however is going to add to that heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals then as well that is how you're going to go ahead and get that when it comes to the side skirts down below black side skirts coming with the lx ex and EXL, although they are matte black side skirts, but they do look just as good with this black exterior, I will say that. But I did want to mention it because body colored side skirts will come with the Touring and Elite. So if I were to have a white exterior, I would have those black side skirts with the EXL here. But if I went up to the Touring, they would be body colored, so they would be white as well. So a little bit of a difference there, I wanted to mention. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch silver painted alloys with the LX. 18 inch gray painted alloys for the EX, 18 inch machine finished alloys for the EXL. And if you were to go up to the Touring or Elite, you will find 19 inch machine finished alloys. So pretty much completely different depending upon the trim level that you go with. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so now since we are around back, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. I actually do like the chrome trim that ties into the sides as well. It goes across the 
back there. Also, LED taillights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. Little added illumination at night. And just below it all, a single exhaust outlet found on the passenger side underneath there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Odyssey, there are a few different ways to go ahead and open up that rear lift gate. There is a button on the key fob itself. There is a button on the lift gate itself. Then there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. And it is a power tailgate, by the way. If you were to go with the EXL trim level and up, that's how you're going to get that. So therefore, we do, of course, have that today. But once opened up, cargo capacity is actually insanely impressive when it comes to the Odyssey compared to other three-row SUVs. I'll say that. 32.8 cubic feet behind that third row. It's mainly because it's so deep back there. A lot of times with SUVs, it's gonna be up a lot higher, so it kind of compromises the cargo capacity, so I do like that. If then I were to fold that third row down, that's gonna bump that up to 86.6 .6 cubic feet. And by the way, it is one simple thing that you just pull on to fold that third row down. It's super easy and it's completely flush then with the floor. So it's completely flat. So I absolutely love that as well. And then with all rows folded, 140.7 cubic feet. So if I were comparing the cargo capacity in the Odyssey, let's say to the pilot, pilot comes in at roughly 84 cubic feet. Odyssey 140. That is a substantial difference there if you're looking for space. I wanted to mention that. But anyways, cargo lighting can be found back there as well. There's grocery bag hooks as well. One of the other changes is there's not going to be any cargo vacuum for the uh, top trim level of the Odyssey, unfortunately. But I did want to say there was plenty of little storage cubby areas back in that cargo area as well that I found pretty cool. So overall, good bit of space, of course. But then making our way to the third row legroom, again, insanely impressive. 38.1 inches so for reference i am an even six feet tall and i was able to fit in the third row of the odyssey i very rarely can say that with suv so easily can fit in the third row of the odyssey i love that rear ventilation by the way does come standard for all three rows it's not going to be found on the roof but it is going to be found on the side so there's going to be some side vents for each individual row in case you were curious about that of course you're going to have cup holders back there as well Overall, still very impressed that I could fit in that third row. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the second row legroom, coming in at 40.9 inches. Also very impressive. Again, six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And so, I know someone's going to ask this, and of course, I'm going to tell you guys, seating for seven is going to come with the LX. Every other trim level gets seating for eight. And let's say if you have the EXL trim level that we have today, and you don't want that seating for eight, and you still want seating for seven, that's fine because that middle seat right there can be completely removed by simply just pulling on one little thing there. So I can completely remove that middle seat. And then not only that, I can move one of the side seats into the middle if I wanted to. I don't have to. If I wanted that captain's chairs kind of set up, I can simply just remove it, maybe leave it in the garage and just leave it with these two seats in the middle if I wanted to, or I could just leave it there. It's up to you. And the cool thing is it gives you that option. So I love that. And in addition to that, of course, you get front seat back map pockets back there. You're going to have a ton of cup holders. You do, in addition to that, also have two USB charging ports. I love that because, of course, with the Odyssey, you're going to have kids in the back. And they're going to want to charge up their tablets. So yes, there are two USB charging ports for that. So absolutely love that as well. Also, tri-zone climate control coming with the EX trim level it up. Meaning, if the rear passengers, the kids wanted a different temperature, they can actually adjust that using the uh, climate control information found kind of on the roof of the Odyssey there. So I think that's pretty cool. I like that. Rear window sunshades coming with the EX trim level it up. I absolutely love that that is pretty cool they are manual sunshades but absolutely love that they're so much better than the ones you could buy at walmart upper seat back map pockets coming with the touring and elite don't have them today we just have the standard seat back map pockets which honestly are perfectly fine for me and i did want to also mention with opening those rear doors of course with the minivan you're not going to have the kids opening the doors into the vehicle next to you like you would in an suv because they're kind of flush they just open back and you can control that using the key fob that is one way you can do that if you were outside of the odyssey you could just simply pull out on that door handle that's actually going to open it and close it and one more way there is actually a button 
on the inside here if you were sitting down you could simply just press that button it's going to actually open up for you then as well but it is power rear doors there so definitely found that pretty cool i liked that but one last thing i wanted to mention for that second row at least is 10.2 inch rear entertainment system coming with the touring and elite that's going to be a blu-ray player or you can stream different things on there as well of course we don't have that today because we don't have those trims but did of course want to mention it but then making our way to the front seats power adjustable front seats coming with all trim levels cloth seating with the lx and ex trims leather seating for the exl trim level and up you will find heated seats for the ex trim level and up heated and ventilated seats then for the elite trim level as well but overall seats were plenty comfortable not the most comfortable seats i've ever felt but still plenty comfortable for a long road trip or something like that but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping of course it is leather wrapped for the exl trim level and up l meaning leather and it will be heated only if you go with the elite trim level then but then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you do have your nifty little honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over a ton of different stuff you can check out on the other side lock unlock button to pop the rear hatch the little circular button is going to be remote start so you can warm up the odyssey on cold days before you actually get inside and then of course the two car buttons in the middle there that is going to be to open and close the doors on the side in case anybody was curious you just hold that down basically so that's pretty convenient as well but overall it is all keyless entry with a push button start coming standard for every single trim level across the board so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just kind of to the left of the infotainment screen there and so once started up the majority of this gauge cluster is a digital display you can actually control what is on that by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there if you press the little home icon you can check between trip information bluetooth information radio information when you need your next oil change as well which i really like how honda does that in their vehicles overall you can actually also see your driving modes up there as well outside temperature the list goes on pretty much everything you could possibly want to see within those digital gauges up there but then taking a look at overall interior quality overhead sunglass holder with the school bus mirror that's what i'm gonna call it i think honda calls it a rear conversation mirror but it's a school bus mirror you could check all the kids in the back that's pretty cool power moonroof coming with the exl trim level end up that's why i like this particular trim that we have here today because we do have that because we have the EXL trim level, I found that pretty cool. Tri-zone climate control coming with the EX trim level and up. Home link controls, this is another big one for me. For up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror, if you were to go with that EXL trim level and up, again, that we have today. So auto dimming rear view mirror, again, with the EXL trim level and up. You get some blue ambient LED lighting for the touring and elite trim levels only. Also wireless phone charger for the elite trim level only. But one of the best parts about the interior quality maybe it's because it's a minivan but in between the front driver and passenger seats a lot of times you're going to find a whole lot of nothing taking up a whole lot of space but in the odyssey it's kind of left open so you can store things down there you could store things like maybe a purse or maybe a small suitcase or a chihuahua or something. There's so much space in between these two front seats here. I absolutely love it. It's very functional, very practical. Just above that, you have a USB charging port, 12 volt power outlet just behind that, two cup holders, and then an absolute ton of space within the center kind of cargo storage area. You got a little bit of lighting in there. Also an auxiliary port and a USB charging port within that as well. And in case anybody's wondering, where is the center armrest? They're actually right against the seats. You simply just fold that down. It's a little bit different than a lot of people are used to, but that's where those armrests are going to be. They're individual for both the driver and the passenger. But overall, interior quality, I will say, is plenty practical and functional. Nothing that really blows you away, but it's very useful and it's very well laid out. I will say that. But then let's go ahead now and take a look at the infotainment screen here. And so if you were to go with the LX trim level, you're going to find a five inch color LCD screen, essentially from the 90s. But if you were to go with the EX trim level and up, you're going to get what you're looking at right now, which is an eight inch color touchscreen display. And actually Bluetooth and audio streaming come standard with either infotainment display. But if you wanted Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and you do, go with the EX trim level and up. And so what that is, if you have a smartphone, you simply hook it up to the Odyssey and then therefore you have free navigation using your smartphone, but displayed up on that infotainment screen using Google Maps. If you have an Android, for example, which is the very best mapping system in my personal opinion, 
Also lets you know if there's speed traps, which is pretty cool. But anyways, also you could check out Pandora and there's a couple other compatible apps as well up on that infotainment screen. But very cool looking clocks. I always like to mention that with Honda. I think that's a pretty cool little thing that they do up on their infotainment screen. There's also a cabin talk system, which you can access through this infotainment screen as well, where you can project your voice into the rear seats of course you probably don't need it quite honestly you should be able to be loud enough that the kids can hear but if you still wanted it it's there for you also you can check out your radio information up there by the way there are going to be two different sound systems for the odyssey first one is a seven speaker sound system with 160 watts and that's going to be essentially for every trim level but the elite because that elite trim level is going to give you an 11 speaker sound system with 550 watts so Having said that, we got the EXL, so we do have that seven speaker sound system with us today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today here, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, not that bad. Maybe it was the song, that was a really cool song, but definitely decent amount of clarity. Bass wasn't the most in the world. I gotta admit that the bass wasn't the most, but it is a seven speaker sound system. You do have the 11 speaker sound system available if you wanted to go with that top trim level, but that sound system wasn't bad for seven speakers. I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Odyssey in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines coming standard for every single trim level across the board, which of course is gonna let you know who or what is behind you. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety and so with this being an odyssey with this being more than likely a vehicle you're going to have kids in the back safety is extremely important so first thing i wanted to mention to put your mind at ease iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation given by iihs and so that pretty much is it all right there Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door lock, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring at this point. Let's get to the fun stuff. Also standard for every single trim level across the board includes collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition, automatic high beams, and a rear seat reminder alert system then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2022 Odyssey, crazy amount of space i really think the odyssey has a competitive advantage if you're comparing this to really any three-row suv maybe with the exception of like a chevy tahoe or a suburban maybe but crazy amount of cargo space very nice third row legroom which you almost never find in three-row suvs also the odyssey of course has a history of great reliability as well gotta love that the iihs top safety pick plus means it's an extremely safe vehicle so that's always important with minivans over Overall, I guess you could say decent driving dynamics actually, which kind of surprised me for a minivan as well. I think the only constructive criticism, maybe there's two of them. The only constructive criticisms I can think of for the Odyssey is I would have loved for an available all wheel drive system to be there just because of the fact that when I hit the gas in this thing, there was a decent amount of slippage because all that power is being set to the front wheels. And in Pennsylvania, we do get things like snow quite often as well as rain. So all wheel drive definitely would have been optimal for me, but LX infotainment system as well, being that five inch LCD screen is straight from the 90s. Honda, you really gotta update that. Just put the eight inch screen on there. I know it's gonna up the price a little bit, but still nobody wants that five inch LCD screen. That's pointless, but anyways. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Odyssey in the comment section below. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.